So my aim in this video is actually to answer a question that came from one of our subscribers. I got a question on Instagram the other day from Josh Drago, and I'll put his Instagram handle below, regarding my opinions and thoughts on developing linear velocity uh, or straight line running speed and acceleration for tennis. And I thought today would be a really good day to go through that video and answer that question because shortly, after driving from home in a moment over to Wavertree, I will be going to the track to do a speed session with one of our younger players, Ant, who you saw in last week's video. So I'm gonna grab some footage. I'll be jumping back to the gym, Cheshire Barbell, shortly after that, where I'll uh, effectively answer that question and give you my thoughts on developing linear velocity or straight line running speed for tennis. Okay, so back in the car, session with Ant done. Quite productive, something we haven't done for a little while now. Uh, so session started with a pretty decent warm up, followed by some really simple uh, acceleration starts and broad jumps, which I'll explain in a couple of minutes as to why I did it, um, why we're working on those things, and why I think they're important for tennis. Uh, just had to have a very quick meeting with Ken Skupski about a couple of really exciting plans that I will be able to announce very soon, but not at the moment. Just going to head over to Cheshire Barbell now. I've got around a 30 minute drive to get back to Cheshire Barbell, the gym where I've got a session with another one of our tennis players. And then I will be setting up my camera, uh, making the place look a bit nicer so that I can get into the, the rest of this video and explain my thoughts on the reasons why you should develop linear speed and acceleration for tennis. So yeah, head over to the gym. I'll get back to you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, so linear velocity or straight line running speed and acceleration for tennis. Why do I think it's important? First of all, I'm a big believer in making sure that the technicality of a drill is relatively simple. So the more complex the movement, the smaller the output the athlete can make. So it's much easier to teach somebody how to run aggressively and quickly and technically efficiently in a straight line before teaching them how to change direction and move in multiple planes of, of direction. So whether it be a beginner or a, an elite professional athlete, if the individual needs to learn how to move quicker, in my opinion, they should learn how to move quicker in a straight line, i.e. linear velocity or linear speed first before they can start to learn how to accelerate and change direction quickly. Secondly, from a physical perspective, tennis players are changing direction, they're learning contact moves, change of direction in multiple planes of movement continuously for 10 to 20 hours per week, whereas they're very rarely developing acceleration and speed in straight lines. So again, it kind of comes back to the first point that I'm trying to make in that <sighs> developing straight line running speed is going to allow for a bigger output and there a bigger impact or, or, or stimulus on the nervous system, the neuromuscular system, to make the biggest impact or change to be able to allow the athlete to progress and develop, get stronger, quicker. Next, let's think about the first step. So let's think about the movement following a split step or the, 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 the movement following a, a, a mogul, for example. The first step is key. The first step is going to initiate the most force. It's going to have to overcome the most momentum in order to gather momentum and then effectively be able to pick up speed to be able to make a shot. The first step can be developed off of a starting line on 100 meter running track. It can be developed using very simple drills on, on the athletics track, on the, on the, the running track. Look at the videos from today. On the screen you'll see a couple of examples where I'm doing some really simple and varied starting patterns with, with Ant. Some from a kneeling position, from, some from a falling start, some from a split step. The focus here, I'm not measuring how quickly he's running, I'm not measuring his physical output, but what I am doing is I'm analysing his first step. I'm trying to look at that angle of attack, I'm trying to look at the, the direction in which he is producing the most force. And that for me in this instance when moving forwards is roughly a 45 degree angle upwards. I'll show you now with an example of, of an image of Roger Federer, exactly the same thing. We're looking at body angle, shin angle. All of that can be developed very simply with some straight lines, some linear drills that are far less complex than a variety of change of direction drills that you can apply with an individual on a tennis court. Get them on a running track. The running track is an incredible environment for an athlete to work. It just feels athletic. It feels, it feels like it's an area to be, be developed as an athlete. That, that atmosphere, that environment is just incredible in my opinion. That's why I like to take some of our players to the track a couple of times a week. So, yeah, it's specificity is developed for tennis on the tennis court. Specificity is developed whilst playing tennis. My job as a strength and conditioning coach or, or to prepare someone athletically is to be able to give the neuromuscular system a big enough stimulus for their body to, to change and get faster and get quicker. You see on Instagram a lot of um, drills that, that might look fancy, you know, skipping in and out of a ladder and, and, and trying to make quick feet and so on. Again, I, the same thing, it comes back to output. A, the drills aren't specific. B, you know, question, what is it we're trying to achieve? We're trying to achieve the ability or to, to improve the capacity of the athlete to produce more force. Moving feet quickly is not increased force production. It, it's just the ability to, to move your feet quickly, which doesn't have any relevance on the tennis court, in my opinion. You want the athlete to learn how to produce more force and at faster rates. Sprints do that. Short, five, 10 meter straight line sprints, learning the first step, being aggressive, working max effort, being timed by the coach. That is what develops speed, not in and out of ladders. Drills that are far too complex for the individual to be able to actually put maximum output, maximum effort into those drills. These drills are so complicated that the athlete is having to think and operate cognitively, is, is having to think about how to do it, where to place their feet. They're just far too complex. Learn how to run in a straight line first. Learn the first step. Learn that angle of attack. 
get the body and the, the shin angle correct. The wall drills that you'll see in the video from earlier on, I'll, I'll put that on the screen now, where I'm trying to get Ant to learn how to flex at the hip and the knee in order to get that nice 45 degree angle of attack and then be able to extend at the hip and knee in order to drive aggressively into the ground in the direction that wants it to travel. That, that, that wall drill is an incredible drill to get the athlete to learn what it is that we're trying to get them to do. And once we've developed that linear speed, once we've developed acceleration, improved straight line running speed, then we can consider applying it into agility and change of direction drills, which I'll cover a separate video on. But the main point in all of this is keep drills simple to allow the athlete to give maximum output. Only then is the neuromuscular system gonna be exposed to enough of a stimulus to change. I hope that makes sense. I did try and keep it simple with the aim of giving my thoughts on the importance of simple straight line drills versus too much change of direction. Change of direction is essential. I'm a big believer in change of direction. I will do another video on quickness, agility, change of direction movements and so on in order to explain how it should be placed, how I think you should do it, what drills are like and so on. But first of all, get the basics right, maximum output, better results. I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do comment below. As you've seen from today, I'm more than happy to answer subscribers' questions, so please do put your questions below in the box. It would be really appreciated if you could click subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the release of the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on Tuesday.